Welcome everybody to March's episode of Cronin's Corner. Thank you for joining us. I am pleased today to be joined by the Executive Director of the Monachusett Veterans Outreach Center, Stephanie Marchetti. Uh, and we're gonna talk about MVOC, its mission, its services, how it serves the region, um, ways to get involved, and a whole lot more. So Stephanie, thanks for joining today and welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So. <laughs> Could, could you just introduce uh, people at home to who you are and how you came to MVOC? Sure. So uh, my name is Stephanie Marchetti. I, uh, I'm originally from Revere, but I moved out this way because I went to college at Fitchburg State. So I have uh, both my bachelor's and master's from Fitchburg State uh, and kind of just stayed in the area. Proud Falcon. <laughs> Double Go Falcon. Uh, Secretary of the Alumni Board of Directors, too, so super proud Falcon. Uh, and I spent about 12 years actually working in public higher education before moving to where I am now. So a few years working at Fitchburg State and then about a decade at Mount Wachusett uh, Community College in a variety of roles uh, and particularly working with veteran students at mm -hmm. the Mount as well. Uh, so well at the Mount I was asked to join the Board of Directors at MVOC, served on the Board of Directors for about a year and a half and then the Executive Director position opened up and I was really happy to be considered for it. So I've been at MVOC for I think about nine ten months now. And then they just pulled you right in, yeah. right? They yeah. said very good. So can you, for people who aren't familiar with MVOC, sure. can you talk about where it is and what the mission is? Sure. So Montachusett Veterans Outreach Center is a private nonprofit organization that is headquartered in Gardner, Mass and serves veterans throughout North Central Massachusetts. And we really try hard to be a one-stop shop for whatever our veterans need. So we have uh, transportation for medical appointments to our veterans, a food and clothing pantry, benefits advisement, so if your VSO in your town, you know, is can't do what you need or doesn't have the capacity to, you can come see us for and, benefits advisement. And what's advisement. a VSO for people who aren't familiar with VSOs? Sure, so every city in town nationally has a veteran service officer who is a veteran uh, that can help you get like chapter 115 benefits, service connections, all of the benefits you earn during your time in the service. Uh, some towns combine them so you know one office like for example in Gardner the VSO serves three or four towns now but right. you all have your own individual who can help you uh, but it's an overwhelming process and sometimes there's stuff they can't cover so our benefits counselor can also help you get like SNAP benefits uh, or regular unemployment benefits or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, so our benefits counseling is by far one of the most popular services that we offer. Uh, we also have mental health counseling. We have two licensed mental health counselors on mm -hmm. staff. And then what we're most well known for is our housing programs. So right now we have about 20 independent apartments. They're a mix of studios, one bedrooms and two bedrooms throughout Gardner and Winchenden. We have two permanent supportive housing facilities, one for male veterans and one for female veterans. Uh, and those are our permanent supportive kind of means like group living. So you have your own bedroom, but you share a kitchen and living room uh, and amenities with, with the other folks in the house. What is unique about our housing uh, for permanent supportive is our male veteran home houses veterans of all discharge statuses. So even if you did not get an honorable discharge, you're eligible to live there, which isn't the case everywhere. Right. Um, we also house reservists that have not had federal activation. Mm -hmm. So there's this whole slew of, of veterans who signed up to be in the reserves and were never deployed overseas and just don't have access to the same benefits right. as others. So we'll house them as well. Yep. And then in our female veterans home we will also house family members of veterans so a widowed spouse or a spouse or a child of a veteran uh, can live in that home as well so it kind of is a family service there and then finally we have a transitional housing program it's called GPD they exist nationally as well and it's a two-year transitional living program a lot of those veterans come from us straight out of substance uh, recovery programs if they're getting divorced and just kind of need a temporary place to stay will they look for something permanent uh, there's a variety of reasons uh, and they can stay there for up to two years one of the reasons I think MVOC is so special is b because what you said it's got a, a very wide gate right and you know I worked in veteran services for about a year after I got out of the, out of the army and what I found was the people that need the most services aren't the people with the most access to them, right? And I think a lot of people don't know, but if you 
uh, got in trouble perhaps in the service and you were discharged with something less than an honorable, you have different levels of access to mental health care, physical health care, education benefits, housing, you name it. And there's, a, there's an incredible scope of benefits. Um, how many people does MDOC see come through its doors who, who are part of this population? Oh, for sure. Uh, the majority of our veterans are those who can't receive services elsewhere. So it, those with a, a discharge that isn't honorable or other than honorable, there's a few other tiers below it, uh, right. make up the large amount of it. Uh, we originally opened as a Vietnam era veterans center, actually here in Fitchburg was our original location. Uh, so we serve an older population of veterans who, who don't know how to navigate the nuances of newer systems, who aren't logging online to look and at it's stuff. Digital. It's hard to navigate, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then our Unity House, which is the group home, is uh, largely you know reservists who have no other benefits provided to them. So they can live with us and their cost of living is 30% of whatever their income is. So if their income is $50 a month, then they're you know paying like 15 bucks to live with us or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, so I would say the large majority of who we serve is those who cannot get services elsewhere. That's right. really our focus. Um, and I think what's nice is my background in community colleges, that access and equity for everybody belief translates really nicely right. uh, into helping that group. And I just have one story that sticks with me, which I think speaks to why MVOC has, has such a special place and there's such a critical need for it in the state in terms of delivering services to veterans. But I served with a kid who, um, on patrol in Afghanistan, got blown up, um, received a Purple Heart, uh, had got a traumatic brain injury, and was a great troop, right? Never got in trouble, did everything he was asked came back and um, dealing with the trauma of, of what he had uh, experienced started to act up, right? And it, it manifested itself in different ways. And this is a 19 or 20 year old kid. Um, but, you know, shoplifting, um, you know, we failed the drug test for marijuana. Then that was it, right? And he, you know, kid with a purple heart, a kid who served honorably in combat, um, who came back 20 years old, was unable to, to meet the very high standards that the military expects. Um, left the service with not only not access to the GI Bill in mental and physical health care, um, but kind of like a scarlet letter, right? Because yeah. you, you, you know, on your last day in the service, you get a DD-214. It says um, your discharge status. And every employer you're ever going to go to for the, you know, most likely for the rest of your life is going to want to see a DD-214. So um, it's really unjust when you think about it, um, it that that these these people are, are hurt. So um, it's just yeah. such a critical ser service, and just yeah. um, there are more services in VOC than that same person, that same kid that I served with walking into the VA. Yeah, and I would say to that note, our benefits counselor is excellent at discharge upgrades. Right. I mean, she's gotten Marines discharge upgrades, which are notably like the most difficult one. Uh, one of our residents. Just a couple weeks ago, she had been living in the woods for six years. She was discharged with a, with a poor discharge status because she had trauma in the military that, that caused her to need to leave. Uh, and she was really upset about it. Didn't feel like a real veteran because she didn't have that. Right. And after a couple of years, because it takes time, she's now an honorable discharge. And her whole life has changed because of that discharge upgrade, because right. there's all sorts of services and benefits and housing vouchers. Um, so to be able to help those who either need the discharge status or just can't get it is crucial because so they signed up to volunteer for the military whether you know they were mentally capable of doing it or not right, right. they right. they made the commitment to volunteer so we should make the commitment to help them and, and i think across the state too there's um there's some serious reforms going on at the soldiers homes we both know um the tragedy at the holyoke soldiers home um at the onset of covid cost more than 70 veterans their lives i know in the legislature we're really taking a holistic holistic look at what uh you know what is the mission of and what is the future going to look like at those those soldiers homes both yeah. the one in holyoke and the one in chelsea and i think what came out of that is a realization that across the state we need to deliver housing and um and services to elderly veterans uh with a with a geographic equity lens right and i think we stand to benefit from that here right i mean uh holyoke is just as hard to get to as, as chelsea for us mm -hmm. but can you talk about MVOC's role and the you know, future projects that we're working on to increase housing availability for veterans? Yeah, for sure. So all of the housing that I mentioned comes to about 50 units, which 
isn't a ton in right. this area. So we are very fortunately in our second year of pre-development for a housing expansion project, which is gonna be awesome. So we have, uh, with the town of Winchenden, acquired the former Streeter in Poland Street Schools, which in Winchenden are directly across the street from the Senior Center, which mm -hmm. is great. And we're converting that into 44 units of one bedroom apartments, specifically for low and very low income veterans. Uh, it's, it's about a $20 million project. We're hoping to break ground this fall uh, with a variety of funding sources. But uh, like I said, 44 one bedroom units. But in addition to that, because we know there's a need for elderly veteran housing, yeah. uh, there's gonna be a clinic on site. So for vaccines, which we didn't know when we started it, but has become increasingly more important, um, but also space for OT and PT on site. Uh, there is a case manager space on site. There's a day room for activities. There is going to be, you know, barbecue grills, bocce courts, raised planting beds, all of those things. Um, the other kind of unique feature is that there's going to be a, a columbarium on site, which is a, a place for our uh, veterans who live with us to be buried if they need to be. Um, there is a wonderful veterans cemetery in Winchenden. Beautiful but you have to have the right discharge status okay. to be buried there. And so you can be buried with us at little to no cost uh, if you're a resident, um, which is really important because when you think of the population of folks with, with low to very low income, that's what they need. So it is a place where you can be for as long as you want uh, independently, which is really nice because our, our congregate homes are, are great and they're great for the right fit. But if you want to live independently, you don't want 12 roommates. Right. Um, so yeah. to just have like an apartment building is going to be really great. It's, it's such a complex um, space to work in, I think, because there's local benefits, state benefits, federal benefits, and they apply differently to different populations from different eras yeah. um, with different discharge statuses. Yeah. How, do, how do you deliver services to a diverse population and then just make it simple for somebody who walks through your doors to really navigate a very complex um, ecosystem of, yeah. of services that are available. It, it is, you're right, so complex. I mean, I thought just the educational benefits when I was in that sector were complicated. What's going on? Complicated. Yeah, GI Bill, rehab, right? right, there's tons, but then you open it up to all services and, and it is really a, a roller coaster. Uh, and one of the ways I would say that we prepare for it is one, we employ a lot of veterans and right. so they know how to navigate the system, which is great. Um, and two, a lot of our employees have been with the organization for a really long time in various roles, so they know how to Become navigate it now. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and the second is, or the third way is that even though we're a private nonprofit, we have a variety of grant funding from the VA, the Veterans Administration, mm -hmm. and those really clearly dictate rules for us as well. So we have a lot of support both statewide and nationally from the Veterans Administrations, and then just a great depth of knowledge in the staff. I'm really fortunate to have the fantastic staff that I do. So we've talked about kind of the scope of services in terms of housing, connecting to yeah. mental health counseling. Yeah. What, what about just the sense of community among the, the veterans yeah. community that you built at MVOC? Can you speak yeah. to that and, and how that manifests itself in, in different programs? Absolutely. That's my favorite part about what we do. Uh, so, you know, it's great to have all of the stuff you need, but there's way more to life than the stuff you need. Right. Uh, there's fun. Uh, so <laughs> we do those things too. Uh, and really nicely coming out of COVID, we're, we're planning a lot of great stuff. So we do a uh, once monthly veterans coffee hour, light breakfast, come in and just chat with us, yep. which is great. Uh, beginning in April when the weather turns, we will have hiking programs uh, and walking programs. So we're partnered with both North Quabbin Trails Association and North County Land Trust and we do accessible low impact walking and hikes. Get those steps in, Vets. Just yeah, walk get those it. steps in. Um, yeah. And if you can't walk it, we have wheelchairs that can traverse the, the land for you too. So just be outside with us. Uh, the weekday hikes are, hikes are specifically planned to be on the half days for our local schools so you can yep. take your kids too. So uh, coffee hour, breakfast, walking and hiking programs. We're partnered with the Mount now to offer free enrichment courses for veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, we just did a basic intro to computer classes. Uh, and then up next, we're going to do a fly tie fishing class with a fishing trip connected to it. We have a healthy cooking for non-chefs, so how to make more than you know what you can heat up in the microwave, uh, and a woodworking course so they can build like keepsake boxes and small furniture as well. Uh, so all of those are in the works, and then we'll we'll kind of just keep 
keep going with it. Uh, we do a great big 4th of July barbecue for our veterans every year and, and kind of just get out in the community and do stuff. Gotcha. So um, our website has all our events on it, but I also post on there events from all of the veterans organizations across the state. So if you're looking for fun stuff to do, the events calendar on our website has, has ours, has clear path for veterans stuff, has home bases stuff, because there's a lot of veterans organizations that, that do really fun stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. One of the, the, the great resources that you have that you mentioned is is mental health counselors on site yeah. and I don't it, it, whether it's a veteran community or people outside the veteran community people struggling with substance use disorder mm -hmm. uh, battling the opioid addiction battling mental health challenges I think mm -hmm. overcoming stigma is something that um, certainly applies like everybody else to the veteran community yeah. can you talk about um, and maybe an interesting lens is how services to veterans have kind of changed across the the generations of veterans that you serve from yeah. you know maybe world war ii korea to vietnam to today yeah it's it's really interesting to look at the waves of mental health needs for the different eras of veterans uh you know a lot of our vietnam era veterans struggled with alcoholism and now we see a new wave of uh, struggles with opiates with like the afghanistan and iraq veterans mm -hmm. and and there's a, a plethora of going on there the thing i would say that stays the same for all of them is how much pride they have in the amount of work it takes for them to ask for help. Right. Uh, so, we, so we combat that, for lack of better words, in, in a few different ways. Uh, one is having licensed mental health counselors on staff that participate in all the fun activities. So you can come in and get to know them and work with the person that lines up best with you. And build kind of a relationship before you go down and you sit down it, and say, I need help. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. You know, one of the things we see a lot is someone will come to us when they're in crisis and they need a quick fix. I would say, come to us long before you're in crisis. Come to us when you're doing great right. and get to know who we are so that when you are in trouble, you've already established a relationship that allows you to more easily ask for help. Right. Um, and we have two great counselors on staff, one of it which starts probably by the time this airs, he starts March 1st. Um, we have one longtime counselor uh, named Charlene. She's fantastic. Her focus is substance abuse. She has a, a long history in, in working in uh, treatment facilities and things like that. And then our new counselor, or clinical director rather, who's coming on board, Dr. David Duran, is uh, an Afghanistan Army veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a Purple Heart recipient as well. He's got a clinical psychology doctorate. He has background in, in substance misuse uh, certification. Uh, he has actually worked at Chelsea Soldiers Home, Wounded Warrior Project, and he's coming to us from Banyan Recovery Centers. Uh, so he's got a wide variety, and he's got that veteran to veteran connection, right. yeah. which is nice. So as the executive director, and you've been there nine months now, yep. where do you, where would you like to see MVOC head into the future, and what's your vision for yeah. where we are in five years and ten years? Yeah, so, so you know, we've been uh, in place for about 40 years now, and we know what we do really well, right? Yeah. We do mental health counseling really well, we do benefits advisement really well, and then we fill in the blanks there. I would like us to expand our programming and opportunities for veterans to participate in things. Uh, and the reason for that is that we're seeing a, a decrease in folks participating in legions and posts and VFWs. Yeah. I want to encourage the younger generations to get involved in those things and to help those places adjust to what the younger generations want. So more camaraderie is something I would hugely like to do. And then once this uh, housing project is, is built, my next vision, which is probably more of a five to 10 year vision, yeah. uh, is an expansion into family housing because we need to start serving those who served in Afghanistan and Iraq who are a younger generation right. that, that have families. So. All of our studios and one bedrooms are great for the veterans we're working with now, but we need to set ourselves up to, to serve the next generation too. And I think one of the things for me that is, is sets kind of my generation of, of people who served apart from, from prior generations um, is just when you think about the World War II people um, mm -hmm. or even um, Korea and Vietnam, like they were drafted with the, you know, the people to their right and their left that they went to high school with or in college mm -hmm. with. You know, in World War II, everybody went out after Pearl Harbor and, mm -hmm. and enlisted. Um, and there was also, you know, those World War II ended, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you were in the European theater or when you were in the Pacific, and everybody kind of came home at the same time too. Mm -hmm. um, that was different for Vietnam, right? And mm -hmm. I think um, what, what was 
was so hard for Vietnam veterans is, you know, there's no parade, right? There's no VE right. day or VJ day. And then they kind of came home by themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think maybe that's one reason that, you know, those American Legion and VFWs that were so strong and such vibrant civic mm -hmm. organizations for those World War II veterans, uh, yeah. you know, haven't been able to, um, or, or just have transformed and changed, and are and are different right now for Vietnam veterans or, or people yeah. like myself who, um, you know, served in the post 9/11 era, um, which I just yeah. think is interesting. It is. It is. I mean, everybody. In you know, so I was in high school when 9/11 came, so all of my friends started signing up, right? right? And it, but they all came home at such different times that that sense of camaraderie almost dissipates because you didn't come on one big plane or boat back you, you came in one-offs right um, and so to build that sense of community stronger is is really important and, and also just the communication right like I imagine that when the VA got stood up after World War II mm -hmm. a lot of the education and counseling about how to access services yeah. happened on bar stools in the VFW and that doesn't yeah. happen at any now because yeah. anymore right in the same way because I just don't yeah. think there's that same you know, community space that large numbers of veterans are gathering at. Yeah, and I also think you know one of the one of the benefits too is that the, this younger generation of veterans is more in tune with mental health opportunities because right. they didn't exist for the other generations, right? right? Yep. So we we spend a lot of time with with our older generations of veterans saying like it is okay to not be okay, right. it is okay to come talk to us. Yeah, you don't have to suck it up. Um, but the younger generation will come in and say like, I relapsed today and I need help, and right. they're because they grew up in an era where accessibility to, to mental health was not as stigmatized um, as it had been previously. Um, so to connect them in those ways and then send them off to VFWs and things for the more fun and camaraderie right. stuff is, I think the avenue will have to go down. So for people who are not veterans or maybe aren't yeah. even familiar with MVOC, how can they get involved uh, in your organization? How can they uh, support the veteran organization kind of writ large here in North Central Mass? Sure, so there's a few ways and there, there's different tiers of it. So one is as a private nonprofit, obviously there, there's opportunities to donate, right? Uh, and donation of, of time, money, and goods are the three different ways, right? So donation of time is if we've got an event going on that you're interested in, come with us. Uh, so the hiking opportunities and walking opportunities are for veterans, but I love when every veteran has somebody to walk with. Right. And so civilians walking along on those is great. So donations of time is great. Um, donation of goods, you know, with transitional living, there is always a need for pillows, bedding, towels, food pantry items, if, if you're able, like new mattresses, you'd be shocked at how quickly we run through mattresses. Right, right. Yeah. Um, our 12 bed GPD program saw 75 residents last year. So there's a high turnover there. So donation of goods. And then the third is donation of money. And $1 is great, uh, $5 is great. You know, it doesn't have to be a huge amount. Um, if you did want to donate a larger amount, there are naming opportunities for the new building. So I always have to plug that. Stephanie Marchetti, yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> put, yeah. If you want to cut her a check, if yeah, you we'll, wanna, we'll get building yeah. named after you boy do I have one <laughs> um, so yeah so donation of time money and goods whatever you can do and then the the third or, or the the fourth opportunity that's really the easiest is if you if you see our events and activities and requests on social media or online share them yeah and help spread the, Get word. the word out yeah. You, you never know who you're going to reach. It right? is. And, and I think, you know, MVOC is unfortunately a bit of a hi hidden gem, right? We There are a lot of really Great. large veterans organizations that can do rig big flashy things mm -hmm. that we can't do. Um, but we can help the people and their families. Uh, and so just kind of sharing the things we're doing with people around you and encouraging them to participate is awesome as well. Gotcha. Um, so for me, when I think about veteran services, the first thing I think about is I'm always amazed at how many resources are out there. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize that you know our, yeah. our federal government is very committed to yes. um, to taking care of our veterans. The budget is 270 billion dollars a year, yeah. I think, yeah. um, and that's a health care system. It's a, every service under the sun. And, but the second thing is it's very complex. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have these gaps in terms of delivering services right. to like the, the people that we talked about with less than honorable discharges who, you know, who in many cases served honorably in combat and right. um, through a series of unfortunate circumstances or dealing with the trauma of what they experienced in the military can't access those services. Yeah. So I'm just wondering kind of from the 30,000 foot view, 
we have this complex system. We've mm -hmm. got billions of dollars of resources. But where, from your kind of foxhole, where's the greatest unmet need? And where do we need to be doing a better job right now in terms of delivering services to veterans? Sure. So one of the things that I've, I've been working on at MVOC, because, because it's a need I see, is connecting all the individual groups together, right? There's so many places where, oh, you called the wrong office. Now let me transfer you seven times till you get the thing you need, right? So there's a fantastic veterans employment counselor through Mass Hire in Lemonster. Well, he comes and sits in our office once a month for like five hours, yeah. right? So that service that is separate is now on site with us, right? There's all sorts of you know, trail organizations that are committed to veterans. North Quabbin Trails Association was founded by a veteran. Um, and so hooking up with him so we can walk on their land and do things together is part of it. Um, you know, when our mental health counselors are have a full schedule, we connect with the VA in Fitchburg particularly to get on there. So um, I would say unification of services. We, we work a lot in silos amongst the veteran community and, and joining together is important. Um, and I would tell my, my fellow nonprofits, like I'm not in competition with any right. of you. Yeah. If you have housing and we don't, I'll send them to you sure. and vice versa. Or, you know, if your veteran doesn't want to live in your geographic area but would be open to mine, give me a call. So so joining forces and in, in being a united front is really helpful. Um, the more organizations can work together or just create those pathways to work together is important. Because I don't see it simplifying, right, frankly, right. like those to simplify uh, you know, 50 year of government <laughs> history into a streamlined service is gonna take a long time. Right. Um, and so all of us just connecting and working together better, I think makes a difference. And you've got this paradox of more resources, but that's more yeah. programs and more red yeah. tape and more bureaucracy. Exactly. Um, so people like you who are the glue that bring it all together, thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate um, it, thank you. What is the best part of working at MVOC? Oh, What's your favorite part of the job? I love housing people. A lot. So, for example, yesterday, you know, I had a woman come in and she had found a veteran who was displaced. You know, he had a longtime partner, partner passed away, and they were living in her home. He had to be removed. So he was in a hotel. Not great, right? Who can afford $80 a day indefinitely? So, gave him a packet. We met, we're meeting, he moves in next week. Unbelievable. Um, and now he's housed, right? So, from homeless to housed in a week. And that is awesome uh, and we do that a lot you know uh, this past summer we had those torrential torrential rains a lot of our veterans choose to live out in the woods right all those campsites got flooded we took a veteran in he came with a bag of belongings soaking wet in in his truck and was just like I, I was yeah right. he was like yeah. I was planning to live out help. in the woods till September I can't anymore 72 hours later he lived with us so that is that's the best part Absolutely. Um, is just housing people <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for, for coming on the show today. Thank yeah, you so thank much you. for all the work that you do at MVOC. And I, I think for me, the big picture, like your value is a complex system with a lot of resources, and MVOC is just the glue yeah. and the gate for people to come in and, and get services. So to end, can you just tell people how to get in touch with you, how to support your organization, sure. um, and how to refer people to you for help? Sure, so we are at veterans-outreach.org. That's veterans with an S at the end. You can see our events calendar on there. You can donate to us directly on there as well. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook at Montachusett Veterans Outreach Center, and we have a really active Facebook page if that's where you are. Or come in, just come in and tell us what you need. Um, you might come in and say you need a box of food, but I'm gonna find like three other things to give you while you're there too. Uh, so if you don't know what to ask for, just come in and introduce yourself and, and we'll tell you what to ask for uh, and, and make sure you're provided with it too. You got it. All right, Stephanie Marchetti, <laughs> Montachusa Veterans Outreach Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for and having thanks me. for all the work you do. Cool, thanks for having me. That's it, we'll see you next month everybody.